one of the most important things when it comes to longevity, peace, tranquility, living your best life, being at peace, being happy, letting go of all the dead weight that we have on our shoulders, in our mind, and in our soul. Today, I, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about fixing the relationship with your mother, father, family. This could extend beyond that, but I wanted to talk about it specifically because I've been a little inactive the last day or two, right? I've had my parents come and visit. They moved to Florida uh, probably a year or two after I did. And I noticed that when I started my journey in real estate, entrepreneurship, and personal development, I made it a point of contention for me. Uh, to really make the relationship with my parents better. It's not that we had a bad relationship. I just think most people nowadays with their family, especially here in the States, uh, whether it's their mother, father, or other people in their family, but especially the mother and father, there's not a deep connection there. There isn't a great relationship. Um, and I think it's one of those things that causes a lot of stress, strife, and a lot of unseen issues in people's lives. So let me give you an example, right? A lot of us butted heads with our parents and our families growing up. Uh, whether it's a difference in beliefs, philosophies, uh, disagreements on career paths or whatever it is. But you guys need to understand that for the most part, right, there will be exceptions to the rule, right? People who have been severely abused and that kind of stuff, right? But again, a lot of us tend to over-exaggerate things. So if you're a part of that exception to the rule, then this video isn't for you, right? Because I don't want to target it specifically towards them. I want to target it towards most people. We over-exaggerated. We were rebellious, you know, and our parents didn't necessarily go against what we wanted. It's just they didn't understand it. Like, as an example, if you wanted to be an entrepreneur, of course, your family's not going to support it, especially initially, because none of them were entrepreneurs. They don't understand it. It seems too risky and too dangerous. Different set of values and beliefs and worldviews compared to yours, up and coming, new, right, fresh you're going to clash. And it's not because they don't want you to succeed. It takes maturity to see this. It's because they want to protect you. So I made it a point to say, hey, you know what? I want to make the relationship with my parents stronger. I want to step up the way that I communicate and, and how I deal with them. And I'm going to be the bigger person and do what I can to put my best foot forward, not let little things get to me and, and do a better job of creating a better relationship with them. And now me and my parents get along so much better. I feel like there's less tension between us. And again, not to say that we ever had a bad relationship, but it's gotten better. We hang out more. We talk more. We talk, you know, three, four or five times a week most of the time. And it's cool because since I've done that, right, and I compare my life now before that, it's only improved, right? More peace, more tranquility, more enthusiasm, right? Less dead weight in my mind. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't really talk about. And even if you're in a position right now where it's neutral or you don't even think it's important, I'd recommend that you improve that area of your life or make it something that you work on, right? Make the extra effort of calling your parents more if you live out of the area or if you do live close to them still, going to see them, right? Going once or twice a week, right? Going out of your way to show them more love and appreciation I think is going to help you because it's one of those things that, again, it's a card that you were dealt. We didn't choose per se, our family, but I think in the depths of your soul, and this is just my opinion now, right? If you don't have a good relationship or strong bond with your mom or dad and a lot of these closer people in your family, but especially the mother and the father, it's almost like there's something missing there, right? And now that ours has gotten better and our relationship has gotten stronger, I've noticed an uptick in my life, right? Being happier, being more fulfilled. Um, and just overall, there's been a positive shift in my life generally speaking, if I look at all areas. And it's something that I recommend you guys do. So let me give you some tips and tricks and share with you what I did to help with this because I think it's so important, especially if you're an entrepreneur, right? Number one is this, is you need to make sure that from a communication standpoint, you step up, right? Regardless of if you butt heads with your parents or not or whatever, it's going to be up to you as the communicator to initiate the communication and be able to navigate their frustrations or whatever it is properly, meaning you are the initiator of this, you want to improve this, it's going to be up to you to do these things and make the adjustments that you need to make. No matter how stubborn it may be, no matter how difficult the communication may be, it's up to you. When you take responsibility, you'll figure your way out. Now, if you're like I was a long time ago, where your communication wasn't at a level to be able to deal with this, then you need to improve. Make this one of the many reasons that you decide to work on your communication and improve it. That is so, so key. Right, like, and, and I want to leave that as a baseline because, again, if you're the one extending the olive branch, if you're the one that's going to start 
changing this and, and putting your best foot forward and raising your hand and saying, hey, I want this to improve, you're going to have to be the one that navigates it. Because remember, they're how they are. They have their personality type, their way of communicating. You're going to have to navigate that. Because again, if you want to be the one to initiate all this, you're going to be the, the one that has to make the adjustments, right? Now, tied with number one is number two is, and this is difficult for a lot of people, grant them their beingness, meaning allow them to be how they are. If they're short-tempered, allow that. If they don't um, smoothly communicate with you, allow that. If they are upset all the time, allow that. If they're very stuck in their belief system and don't want to support what you do, allow them that. Grant them that. Grant them their beingness. B-E-I-N-G-N-E-S-S. -S. Grant them their beingness. That alleviates a lot of the pressure and takes off that stigma in your mind that you need to change them. You're not going to change them. They're your parents, right? Your mother and father. And this extends beyond the mother and father. That just happens to be the focus here, right? Grant them their beingness. Grant them their beingness. Even just saying that relaxes me. Why? Because then automatically when you don't grant them their beingness, there's like this tension. There's like this, this clash. And we need to remove that. You're not going to change them, nor should you change them, right? You want to be able to, even if there's a lot of friction and tension and disagreements, to be able to be in the same environment, communicate, have love for each other, and be cool, be cordial, right? Being able to be in that environment, be around them, spend time with them. And although you may disagree fundamentally at the core on everything, you can still love them, have a good time, spend time with them. And that takes a lot of maturity and development. But if you can do that, you've now achieved a level where you can grant yourself and the people around you peace. You could literally be having tension, war tension around you, but you'll be peaceful. You'll be tranquil. You'll be calm. You'll be collected. And that's a cool skill to acquire that goes long beyond the scope of just, hey, I want to have a better relationship with my mother and father. It's something that I can say that through this has developed for me that I can find peace and tranquility and, you know, be calm and at ease all the time. And think about that for all of you uh, watching this video. How many of you have unnecessary tension, anxiety and ease? You don't realize that a lot of that is self-imposed. To a degree, we can say external factors contribute to it, but we amplify it. We make it much worse. You may be given one or two level out of 10 stress and anxiety. You amp it up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So you have to develop and grow. So we have the communication aspect. We have granting their beingness, right? Number three is you need to be the one to make the effort. You need to be the one to, to say, hey, I'm going to put this on my back and grow it. I'm going to reach out more. I'm going to call. I'm going to initiate, right? You need to be the initiator. You need to be the one that that starts these things. Hey, let's plan a trip. Hey, let's talk more. Hey, let's, let's meet up once a week. Let's have lunch every Wednesday, right? You need to be the initiator. Because for some of you, right, your parents will be the initiators. Like my parents are always hitting me up too. But I'm also making the effort to call them, check in on them and that kind of stuff because they'll also give me my space because they know I'm an adult. So you're going to have to do that. Now, if you fall on the side of the spectrum where your parents never hit you up or they're more distant, you're going to have to put in even more of an effort. But remember, you have to be the initiator. So whether your parents fall on this end or that end in regards to the ability to initiate with you or their willingness to do that, you need to be the one that shoulders this and says, hey, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to make it a point that every Monday and Wednesday I call them. Every Friday we get together, right? Something like that. Because what happens typically, right, is someone will pass away or something bad will happen. And then that's when people want to rekindle or reinitiate. Why wait until that when you can do it now without having this guise of losing them or this, this unjust or unfair pressure to do it just because they got sick or something like that, right? That's typically what we see. We initiate all these things when someone passes away or they get really sick, right? Why wait for that external factor when you can initiate it right now, right? So that'll be the, like the top three things that I can say will be helpful with this because when I look back at it, it was just a small, consistent effort over time that allowed this to happen naturally. It wasn't like an overnight thing. And, you know, my parents might be watching this video and be like, what the hell? But that was always a point for me because having that tension growing up was never pleasant for me. I never liked it. I always felt like we butted heads or they didn't agree with my lifestyle. But instead of me taking responsibility and doing what I needed to do to correct it, I always pushed it outside of me and just said, well, you know, me and my parents don't get along or we don't see eye to eye or whatever it is. But when you take responsibility for it and say, hey, wherever we're at now, I want it to improve and I'm going to take the necessary steps to do so, you'll start doing everything that you need to do. And you'll see these challenges as just challenges and obstacles and you'll work through them. Right. And it's really that simple. So I think for many of you, it's just 
uh, you may be watching this and saying, well, I never thought about this or this was curious or intriguing, but you need to make sure that you make the effort and that you do what you need to do because in the end, I can tell you from my personal experience and my opinion, this makes it worth it. This makes it better. And once you do this, you may open the door to other people or opportunities where you're like, hey, maybe I can mend the relationship with this person. Or at the very least, it'll teach you that if you want to bridge a gap, right, extend an olive branch or do something in regards to either building or repairing any kind of relationship, you know you're capable of doing it. And at the most intimate level, that relationship is with your mother and your father. They're your blood, right? They brought you into this world. And I think there's something sacred about that. And if you, you focus on that, it's going to naturally have spillover into other areas of your life. And I think that's super important. It's something that I've realized more getting you know, older. Um, I started working on this a long time ago, but I look at where our relationship is now. We get along, we laugh, we have a good time. And you know, looking back to when I was a kid, there was very few times I can remember my mother and I, my father and I having overall pleasant interactions. It was, there was always this underlying tension and rebelliousness. And part of it was me for sure, but it's not cool to live with that. Cause then you clash with the very people that you supposedly love and adore and that brought you into this world. That doesn't make any sense when you look at it on paper, right? Hey, these people are related, you know, they gave birth to this person, you know, their child, their, their um, son or daughter, yet they're constantly fighting and there's friction that just doesn't make any sense, right? If we watch that as a story, we'd be scratching our heads saying like, what's going on here, right? Cool. So I just kind of wanted to touch on this um, kind of like a side type of video and topic compared to what I normally do, but I think it's important. My parents are here right now. They're downstairs, but I wanted to make this video. Uh, I thought it was very relevant. Uh, hopefully you got something from it. Make sure that you leave a thumbs up, support. Those of you who are not on my email list, I'm always doing giveaways and events and doing a bunch of stuff. I've given away blueprints and follow-up processes and pieces of a lot that I do. So if you're interested in staying up to date with what I'm doing and or getting all those goodies, I recommend you get on my email list. The link is below. You just go to my website. It pops up. I also have something floating around on Facebook and Instagram, the FISBO an expired blueprint for those of you who are in real estate. It will give you a codified system for expireds and for sale by owners day by day on what to send them and how to follow up in order to secure your chances of getting a listing. All right. Appreciate the support. We'll see you guys on the next video. All right. We'll see you later. Peace.